Hey, it's the Deer Wizard, host of North American Deer Talk. I want to tell you about a great new advertising and research platform that we've developed for you, CWDbreeding.com. You know, as the deer industry continues to mature and develop around chronic wasting disease and its known genetic heritability, resources like CWDbreeding.com become essential tools for deer managers across the country making decisions about their herds. I really wanted a platform that excelled at hosting GBV and codon markers in a filterable and searchable manner, but I also wanted to have high quality pictures, videos, ages, scores, NADAR numbers, and a whole host of other information to go along with that. This database puts everything in one easy to find location and allows you to access the industry's greatest genetic resources. I look forward to seeing all the great bucks that people have to offer in one easy to find location, cwdbreeding.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of North American Deer Talk. We're doing a double header here. We got Jade Noble in the studio. Jade, how are you? Josh, doing great. Excited to talk a little bit about our business here. Awesome. Glad you could join me again. Before we get going, I have a little bit of housekeeping. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Don't like YouTube? We do it over at Rumble as well. If you're listening on the podcast, thank you so much. Check us out on Apple and Spotify. If you use Amazon and Google, you can find us there too. We're on all the major podcasting platforms. All right, we're doing a hat giveaway this week again. We got the North American swag hats. That's my boy Roman with a microphone and a bow tie. We hope you like them. It's going to be keyword noble elk. Again, same same one as the previous show that we did. Noble elk. That goes in the YouTube comments section. Don't put it over on the Facebook page. Don't put it on Rumble. Don't put it in the podcast comments. In the YouTube comments to get you into a random drawing for one of these North American swag hats. Awesome. Okay, Jade, I'm excited to talk to you today about what it is that you guys do at, at Noble Elk Farm. Uh, in the last show, we talked some CWD and, and regulatory issues that you were uh, working through successfully, I, I might add. I want to talk about your your business. I think you have a, a really interesting and unique approach to what it is you do. Give us kind of a, an overview of um, you know your elk farm and, and kind of how this whole dream got going and then we'll dive into the specifics yeah so like we we're kind of talking about you know like i've always had a passion for for the elk uh and the animals i grew up working for an elk farmer where i you know was able to learn everything as far as like how to handle elk um you know like feeding them every day giving them meds and stuff like i worked with this elk farmer all through middle school and high school um and just learn i just started learning like a sponge just taking everything in and learning everything about this business um because they did everything as far as like you know selling meat and antler chews for dogs and breeding stock and trophy bulls velvet antler cutting velvet antler off every year um at a young age i was learning everything about this industry uh and in 2020, me and my wife, we decided to buy a farm and start putting up high fence. And we got going right away into this. And I kind of held some of those same business models to, to get me going. Nice. So when you um, when you look at um, when you you mentioned a, a bunch of aspects of of the the elk industry generally and how you yep. can how you can use that um, kind of family farm to develop a, a you know, a business venture and an opportunity. You mentioned, uh, obviously the meat market elk is delicious. Uh, if you're listening and you haven't tried elk, uh, give Jay a call. He will work on hooking you up with some elk or sending you to somebody that can get you some elk. Um, it's a very high quality meat, super healthy. Uh, I, did I say it was delicious? It's delicious. Um, yeah. get, get you some elk. So you guys sell, you guys sell meat, right? You sell elk meat. Yeah, that's one of the main thing, you know, that we're doing, uh, you know, either butchering, you know, right from our farm or if we're running around the country picking up meat animals from other farmers that are, you know, that have a surplus of, of meat cows. Um, we do a lot of running around of picking up elk, um, but basically we retail it at farmers markets and 
we're just lucky. Luckily, where we're located, uh, we're in southern Wisconsin area, so we run markets close to the Chicago area, mm. um, which is bringing in a lot of traffic. And then we do run the Madison Farmers Market, which is one of the biggest farmers markets in the country, mm. where we're seeing anywhere from, you know, ten to twenty thousand people through there every single Saturday. Oh my! Uh, and that that that's all summer long. So, and obviously, like we are the only elk vendor or elk per person down there selling elk meat, and it is like it's a hot commodity. There's people that are looking for a healthier you know alternative to beef something that's lower in fat you know it's higher in protein lower in cholesterol like it is elk is a super meat um so people that are down there you know in madison or in chicago area it's not something they can just get at you know the grocery store like they got to come to these markets to get it from us um and they you know they pay a premium price you know for the meat uh 10 to twenty thousand people a saturday go through that place Every single that Saturday, sounds like a madhouse. It is packed shoulder oh. to shoulder through there from from six o'clock in the morning until two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you know, we're there. We're there every single Saturday. And then even when we get into the winter time and starts getting cold here in Wisconsin, that they do have a very respectful uh, you know, indoor winter market. Um, that you know, they so people farmers can keep selling, you know, their their some product throughout the winter as well. I thought you crazy folks from Wisconsin would be out in the winter. Um, I, I've seen many a Green Bay Packer game where people are not wearing shirts and they have their their cheesehead hats on and the beer in their hand. Oh, yeah. um, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought you guys could handle that. Um, no. no, that's that's awesome. So um, I have to ask because I always look for specialty things. Um, what is your favorite? specialty elk meat item that you guys that you personally really like and seems to be a good seller for you yeah i think you know i think we have our jerky figured out our elk jerky did did really well at the north american elk breeders meat contest this year and hmm. um, we have a lot of positive feedback on our elk jerky but for nice. specialty meats you know jerky snack sticks is awesome um you know and then but everything's good. It don't matter. Like everybody, it seems like the, everybody always comes up to the booth. They want tenderloin, tenderloin and ribeyes, which we're always sold out of. Um, and I tell them, I'm like, look, you can get just some ground burger. It's going to be better than any beef burger you've ever had. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. No, I like that. I, um, I got to, I was fortunate to, to sample all the wares out at, uh, at the convention, uh, that you just mentioned, and I did. Is it? It's garlic. What is it? What do you call it? Crack pepper garlic. Crack pepper <laughs> garlic. And I, yep. I, I sampled some of that. It is delicious. I, I like the, uh, I like the thickness of it. Um, if I, for some reason, and it could be just the, how the cure, uh, gets into the the meat or the you know the length of of drying or smoke time, but the thinner the thinner jerkies. Uh, at least for wild game, they tend to dry out a little bit. And I, I like Too the, dry. I like the three yeah. or quarter inch thickness. Cause it, it that's, adds, that's been the feedback on it is everybody likes how it's a thicker jerky. So yes. like I said, I think we got to figure it out there. Nice. But keep, it, keep, it don't matter, keep doing it don't matter that. what you pick with the elk meat. It's all, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, it is. So. Um, do you guys get into doing, I know one of the, the really most popular things that I've seen, um, is the, the pet market and, and doing antler chews. Uh, it seems like elk yeah. is a really quality antler for that. You guys do that. Yeah. So the antler dog chews is a great, uh, you know, business. Like we, when we're down there selling, you know, meat, you get, you sell just as much dog chews that's sitting on, on your table as well. Um, which is crazy to think about, but like people spend money on their pets. And when you're talking about like quality antler chews, not all antler is the same. Mm. So, you know, there's there's white tail antler, which is super calcified, super dense. That's the same with mule deer. That's the same with axis deer. That's the same with moose. Like it's all, all those antlers are super dense and super calcified. Where when you look at an elk antler, it's mainly marrow on the inside. It's not as, it's not as calcified through, uh, which makes for like, it makes for a better treat for the dog because they can, they, they, 
can get at the marrow. They can actually chew through the antler. Uh, or like I've noticed if you give a dog, you know, whitetail antlers, the mule deer antlers, like sometimes they never get chew through that whole antler. But you give a dog an elk antler, uh, there's a lot more marrow in there and they can chew the whole thing up. So it, 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 makes for a better, it makes for a better chew for the dogs. Um, elk antler is definitely, you know, in the antler market right now is, is, is preferred by, by everybody. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that. I, um, I, I, <laughs> I thought you were going to start bashing whitetail antlers. I'm glad you didn't. Cause no, I, no, we, were, no. <laughs> we, we were kind of getting an argument, but, um, no, that's, that's cool. Now I know, um, I know one of the things that you've been really passionate about and you've, you've really focused on in your business is, uh, the velvet market or, or elk velvet walk us through that. This is not something that, that I know. So I want to take a little bit of time and, and kind of pick your brain and, and expertise about, um, you know, what that is, how it's, how it's made, um, the benefits of it, the, the whole work. So yeah. just, Go ahead and walk us through that process. We'll go through it. So, yeah, I guess let's start way back a long time ago. A lot of farmers, they used to harvest velvet antler. I don't know if you remember this, Josh, but harvest velvet antler, and they would do like a big pool where they'd pull the velvet together. There would be like a buyer, uh, you know, overseas. There'd be a buyer overseas, and a lot of this velvet would be going, you know, into Hong Kong or over to Korea or whatever. Um so I was always just super fascinated about like the whole velvet antler business and it moving around. And um, we sold capsules, you know, velvet antler capsules at, at our farmer's market. And we started building a brand where we were selling it online and on, you know, Amazon and Walmart and brand, the velvet antler brand just slowly kept growing and growing where uh, we we're like, well, you know, like we want to start processing this stuff ourselves because before we were sending antlers you know out to contract manufacturers and it was getting sent all around it'd go to one place for drying and another place for milling and another place for uh packaging and everything and we were like well we want to be able to um, process our own elk velvet antler and we want to be able to help other farmers you know that they may want to sell us their velvet antler or maybe they want to process their own stuff and we wanted to do that all in-house to keep the quality control you can control your product so we built out a processing facility and um you know we bought the equipment needed so like we have like freeze dryers where we, we take that antler that's cut off the head um during the peak potency time so that's cut at the right time while that antler is you know it's still growing and it's not you know overgrown or calcified or anything so you take that antler we dry it out we put it through some milling equipment that grinds it up into a powder. Um, and then from there, we put it through encapsulating equipment to make capsules. And um, and then we bottle it up and, and sell them. So it's it's a really, really niche product. Um, but it, it is like there's us as deer, you know, deer and elk farmers. There's only so much of this antler um, that there's only so much of it here in North America every year. So it's, it is like, it's a, it is a rare product too to get and There, there is a demand here in the United States for it. I have lots of questions. Okay. So, so, um, this will focus on, on, on elk. Um, what is it like? What, you harvest this velvet. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Like, I don't even, I don't yeah. I, I don't know. So, so every, every year farmers happen? are yeah. going to run their animals and it's during the growth stage and depending on the age of the bull, you know, some of those older bulls you you might cut earlier and then some of those spikers might be further behind. You're going to cut them later, but it's before it's well, like the tips of the tines are still rounded okay. and the end of the antler is kind of like, you know, like a bulb. It's not, you know, it's not branching off. Uh, so it's it there is there is like a, a right time to cut that antler, but farmers will run them in, you know, into a hydraulic squeeze chute. Um, you'll basically tourniquet around the the pedicle, and then from there just cut that antler off, um, and 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 then from there you know put that antler into a freezer before for freeze drying. So yeah, there's it's 
something that I guess like, you know, I we're not seeing as many farmers harvesting velvet, and that may be due to that may be due to like the the hunt market where guys are wanting to grow out a lot of bulls. But the farmers that are still cutting velvet, you know, they they'll cut their spikers and their two year olds and their three year olds. You know, your bulls that you're not gonna sell for a hunt, hmm. that those are the guys I'm seeing, you know, harvesting velvet. Um, you know, they're like, well, I'm not going to sell these younger guys yet. So you got to do something with that antler and you're going to, velvet antler pays out a lot more than what just hard antler does. If you were to let them go into hard horn. Shut okay. up. So I was watching a, a show. It might've been by one of the groups out of, uh, Saskatchewan or Alberta. This was a while ago. Yeah. Um, and they were, I, was it like on a like some of the when i say older you know maybe three and four year old bulls i think they were saying like you know 50 to 60 days since they yeah. like kind of start growing antler is when they were that you're gonna bring them in and cut them okay so yep. you bring them into the the work facility you squeeze them down tourniquet the base got that you're gonna cut these antlers off so they're 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 bulbous right they're at a certain stage yep. of growth and yep the so you take those antlers they're they're whole they're you know you got like a main beam and just some points starting to grow but they're not not pointed out they're all rounded what do you do yeah. with that antler yeah so from there you know after like freezing it because you want to start cooling down that antler okay. it's hot that those antlers on the head with all that blood running through that it, it they are warm they are soft uh you know first thing is going to be getting that antler into a freezer and get okay. it you know cooled down um from there, we start cutting that antler down into pieces and, and loading it onto trays into our freeze dryer. And okay. what you're doing with freeze drying, freeze drying is the most efficient way to preserve the minerals and nutrients found in, inside of that antler. Right. Um, there's other companies that they use like dehydrating methods, and there's other companies that use like big heat, commercial heat ovens and stuff. And there's a lot of uh, nutrient loss with those other methods where freeze drying is a little bit more of a timely process. That antler can sit in a dryer for weeks. Um, and it's a little bit more of a costly process, but it's the best way to actually preserve all the great, you know, minerals and nutrients found in that antler. So that would be the next step is just getting in that antler, get it dried completely. Um, and before going into the next step, which is going to be, you know, grinding, and milling that antler down into a fine powder. So the, okay. And like when you're cutting these, like I'm just imagining, like I'll use a reference, a baseball bat, right? Are yep. you just slicing that into whole pieces? Yeah. So, so what, yeah. So when we're cutting it down into pieces, you know, we're going to cut all those tines off. We'll cut, um, you know, the beam in half. And then from there, we're splitting that antler open so that the marrow is exposed so I it see. can dry quicker. Okay. So, yeah. so, so you're, you expose the, the center. Um, I always thought like, you're not, you're not like peeling the velvet off. Yeah. That and right? that's, that's a good point. That's a good point, Josh, because uh, a lot of people, when they hear the word, you know, or the supplement, you know, they read velvet antler, they think that they're taking like that the supplements made out of the hair or the, the outside layer of that antler. Uh, and that's not true. Like the, the outer layer of that antler while it's in velvet is not used in the supplement. So that's actually just, you know, that's waste that's stripped off, you know, after drying that outer layer is stripped off for milling and it's not used in the product. The actual nutritional value of that antler, it's found in that marrow, the marrow and the blood in that antler is what's used. Awesome. See, I learned something today. So I, I feel like I'm, I've accomplished my, my goal for today. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So we have these, these pieces, um, they come out of the, uh, freeze dryers. Um, what happens next? Yeah. So we're going to put it through our hammer mills. It's a series. Like it's there. It goes to like a crushing machine, you, you know, to break it up. Um, and then the hammer mill and to, to make it into like a fine powder. Um, it's sifted. And then after you have that fine powder from there, you know, some of the powder is packaged in bulk. Um, some of it is turned into, you know, our liquid extracts. Some of it, most of it is turned into capsules. Um, and then, you know, and then once you have it into capsules that we just 
bottle it, bottle it, label it, and we sell it, you know, all over the United States. So. Okay. So uh, the end, the end, um, the end product is obviously a, a supplement. Tell me yep. some of the benefits of, of velvet antler capsules, extracts, et cetera. What are they used yeah. for? So oak velvet antler, it's a, it's a dietary supplement that is taken um, daily. Like it's something in your daily regimen, you know, with your other vitamins or gummies that you take every morning. Uh, the main minerals found in velvet antler is you have glucosamine, you have congruent sulfate, collagen, amino acids. Uh, these are all, this is all stuff that helps with your joints, uh, arthritis, lu lubrication of your joints, muscle recovery, workout recovery. Um, we do have a lot of weightlifters and professional athletes that take the velvet antler for the, it's called IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor. Um, as you get older, Josh, like your body, you know, you're slowly going to get start producing less and less IGF-1, um, which helps with your muscle growth and your muscle strength. Um, everybody starts losing that as you get older. So you can supplement with extra IGF-1 that's coming from this antler, um, you know, to keep your muscles strong and keep your body feeling right. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I find it really fascinating that, um, you know, we have a, we have a, a guy like yourself that's looking at a, <clears throat> a frankly, a, a, a niche market, as you put it and, yeah. and saying, okay, like, um, this is a, this is a, a true farming entity and we can now provide, um, this, this supplement product that has great benefits and it's, it's, um, it's natural, right? Like it's, you can't, you can't get any more natural than, um, an antler off a, off an elk. And I think yeah. that's, I think that's really good. Now tell me, tell me about this, uh, the extract. Um, I, I understand the process of the, the, uh, capsules. That's, that's, that seems pretty, pretty normal to me. Uh, tell me about the extract. <clears throat> yeah. So with the liquid extracts, you're just taking that powder, um, and you're basically mixing it with, you know, it's like a water, you're, you're, it's, you're making a solvent. So it's like a water alcohol based solvent where it's, it's taking the, the minerals in that velvet antler powder, um, and you're turning it into a liquid makes a little preservative in there, uh, to keep it from going bad and, and bottling it. But it's, it's pretty much just an alternative form, you know, a different way to take it. Some it's a preference thing. Some people prefer the capsules. Some people prefer the liquid, but, uh, the cool thing with the liquid extracts and I think why they really, a lot of people are, you know, prefer the liquids is that you can, when you're taking a liquid, there's no, you're, you're going to take the velvet antler under your tongue and there's no loss, you know, in the gut. Hmm. So where, when you take a capsule, there's going to be a little loss of nutrients in the gut where with the, the liquid, you're going to just, your body's going to absorb that liquid. You're just going to hold it under your tongue and let your body absorb it that way. Interesting. Um, you mentioned one other, I think you mentioned one other, uh, product that you guys made or was it just yeah, a capsule so, in the capsule? Yeah. So other than just for people, uh, velvet antler works just as great, you know, in pets as well. And we are already in the pet market with selling, you know, we have so many customers that buy the elk antler chews for the dogs. Um, but so it's just, again, like we take that velvet antler, we're putting it now into a press tablet for dogs. Um, there's many, many dogs that suffer from arthritis. They have joint and hip problems, mobility issues as they get older. Um, and you just start, you know, supplementing that dog with elk, with elk velvet antler. Not only is it great for them, but dogs just, they love the scent and the taste of antler anyway. So it's just, sure. a, it's all around great product for them. That's awesome. Uh, in, yeah. in general, like people, you know, velvet antler, like we were talking about, it's a natural thing. They have to be able to wrap their head around that they are eating antler, which is on an animal's head. So it sounds a little crazy, but. You know, as well as anyone, antler is, a, is one of the fastest growing tissues in, in nature. Um, there's nothing in the wild like antler. And in, in, in the wild, antler is nature's medicine. Like when whitetails shed their antlers, elk shed their antlers in the wild, all animals, birds, raccoons, mice, bear, uh, coyotes, like all animals go to that antler and they will like chew on it. Um, for the minerals and nutrients found found in that antler, it's like medicine for them, and it's it's the same thing for people. 
where antler is has been used for thousands of years in traditional medicine. Like this is nothing new. Um, there's encyclopedias basically written on the the benefits of taking velvet antler daily. Um, you just got to get past that you're eating eating antler eating antler off an animal's head, and if you can get by that, um, then you know it's a great it's a great product to use. Well, it's not. I mean, it's certainly the supplement industry generally for for health and nutrition over the past you know call it 10 or 15 years has absolutely exploded at least my 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 uh news feeds uh and social feeds are are full of you know people promoting all sorts of various things and and as science continues to progress we see the benefits of you know certain amino acids and 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 certain mineral contents and vitamins and so on so that's um that's really awesome that it's a, a natural form. And I think people, you know, they can just, again, forget about the, like you, like you said, that it's a, an antler and just look at the benefits of it. It's kind of easy to pop a couple, uh, you know, gel capsules in your mouth and, and swallow them down or do a, a ticature under your, under your tongue. Well, yeah. And I think if you've seen it, like there's definitely been a shift as well. And people are looking for natural alternatives, something that comes from the ground, um, something that comes from an animal, you know, like, so people are looking for natural alternatives rather than something that is made, you know, in a pharmaceutical lab. They have no idea what the chemicals are that they're taking. It's just so we've seen that shift in general too, where like not everybody just trusts everything um, that just because it's prescribed or, um, <laughs> you know, they're looking for these natural, really like natural medicines to, to be able to help. So when you, um, I, I want to get into, and it, you can share as much or as little as you like, um, some of the equipment, um, that you guys, you guys use, right. Cause obviously it's like, I can't go, I mean, yeah, I can, I, I can buy a freeze dryer off the shelf and, you yep. know, I could, I could get stuff freeze dries, but like, I suspect that there's some specialty machines that you guys have been working on to develop. Can you talk about those a little bit and. Yeah, the I mean, processes. absolutely. Like with the machines, and I think since I've started, like our original equipment that we bought, uh, we've already been uh, like this dryer didn't work right, you know, because of this and this antler is so special. It's it's hard, you know, this hammer mill wasn't working right. So like we have, uh, like we've changed, we've learned from our process and have been changing out machines and upgrading to machines that just work better for antler because it is so niche. Like it's, um, it's just different. Not every product's like that. So, um, as far as the equipment goes, like it's pretty, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, uh, but like we, we did, we did find the right machines that work for processing antler. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you guys do, it sounded like you did wholesale and, and retail. Um, if yeah, someone yeah. wants more information on that, where where do they find you? I can drop the the link in the show notes. Or... Pretty simple. You can go to www.velvetantler.com. So awesome. real um, easy to find us there. We do, uh, you know, we are in Natural Grocers, which is a big uh, grocery store slash vitamin chain um, that's all across the West there. Um, so again, we're promoting that that's promoting these elk products and hoping hopefully, you know, we're we're impacting the elk industry, you know, in a positive way by bringing back, uh, you know, bringing back a need for far farmers to harvest velvet. We're trying to pay farmers a premium price on their velvet antler every year and uh, and grow this U.S. market because there's no need for velvet antler to go overseas when there's plenty of demand, plenty of demand for it right, right here in the United States. Um, so that's something we're trying to do. We're, we're also trying to improve just the velvet antler industry in the United States in general. So like, if you look at like Canada and New Zealand, they're, they have a lot more rules and they have a lot more, uh, you know, guidelines that farmers are following. You know, they're not feeding certain hormones to these animals. There, there's a veterinarian on site, they're harvesting, they're all harvesting the antlers the same way. That's something we're trying to build, you know, upon and build here in the U.S. Like farmers are all tagging their antlers the correct way. They're all, after harvesting, they're all keeping it in a clean, cleanliness environment, you know, after harvesting before it's picked up or sold or whatever. Um, so these are all things that we can improve here in the U.S., but uh, 
like I think think we're going to blow up this double antler market here. Yeah, that's awesome. I think from a uh, you know you, you and I both raised deer and elk, and I think from a, yep. an industry standpoint, I remember doing a show uh, quite some time ago. Again, I have a focus on on whitetails, but um, it was called the function stack, and it was just a way. And, and, and I see you doing this and I think it's awesome. Um, it's just a way to, uh, derive alternative sources of income from a specific animal or, or a farm. Right. So, you know, some guys focus, they have a focus in, in one area and obviously your, your, your passion has led you down this, this velvet road and, and that's awesome, but you know, it's a, it's a way to add some extra value to your, to your farm. Right. And like, like I know for me, like I wouldn't be a velvet processor if I, if I um, had elk, but I would harvest antler to send to you. Right. Yeah. And, and that, that adds some extra, that adds some extra dollars into my pocket at the end of the year to help offset costs. Every farmer can. And that's where like we talk with farmers and I've actually like got so many other new farmers cutting velvet because they're like, you know, maybe their thing their niche is they sell trophy bulls and that's it. Or they have hunts. It's like, well, what are you doing? And then they have like a barn full of hard antlers. And it's like, dude, you could be cutting these spikers, cut these two-year-olds, cut these three-year-olds. And we can either just purchase your velvet outright or some of them, you know, maybe they have a hunting preserve with like a little shop, you know, they have like a little shop Mm -hmm. for their customers. And it's like, well, let's process, send that to me. We'll process that, that into capsules. We'll put your label on it with your branding and throw it up in the shop. And when customers are there and they want to, you know, then it's some extra income there for your business. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And it, it probably makes nice gifts as well. I know if somebody, um, oh, yeah. wink, wink to my, my family, if anybody's watching, you can definitely get me some, some velvet capsules from, from Jade. There you uh, go. For, we'll, we'll hook for Christmas you up. or we'll birthday. You. Yeah. We'll get you some sent out. But nice. um, other than that, the only other thing I wanted to kind of talk about was uh, the breeding of Mm. velvet bulls and how there has been a shift where back in the day when there was uh you know back in the day when velvet antler was going for 75 to 100 dollars a pound raw weight and everybody was growing velvet bulls and cutting velvet um you know we were breeding for these bulls that have more mass and are going to cut heavier weights of antler um and we've gotten away from that in the united states a lot of guys are now breeding for you know, longer tines and and wider bulls where something that we're personally trying to do on our farm is we're going to start trying to breed for more mass. Um, so add these bulls with, they might have shorter beam length, uh, but they're going to be heavy. Um, the bulls like, you know, if you've seen like the bull perfect from Bob Northrup or Billabong, mm-hmm. Tap Out, Anaconda, some of these huge Canadian bulls. Uh, that's what we're trying to add back into our genetics so we can grow some really heavy bulls um, that are going to cut, you know, going to cut heavy weights of antler, which in turn, you're going to get more velvet antler capsules when it's all processed. So that's really interesting. I never, I never thought of the uh, genetic component like that. Um, But that's, that's really cool that you can develop a breeding program uh, that is targeted towards, towards velvet, but obviously still, um, you know, has value in the, in the, the trophy market as, as well. Um, it's one of the things that always kind of sticks with me that, you know, our, our industry, um, generally is based around conservation and, and outdoor experience and hunting. And if, if these animals didn't have, um, value to people in the hunting world, uh, we would be raising cows. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, exactly. so it's, it's, um, it's, it's super cool from a genetics aspect that, you know, you can target, um, and develop a breeding program long-term towards, uh, the harvest of, of, of velvet. And that's neat. And you mentioned a, a bull I really like, uh, which was perfect from, from Bob's place. And I, I he, he's crazy. Like I, uh, I, I saw those, I was, I attended my first um, North American elk breeders convention, uh, last year in, in South Dakota. And yeah. I remember seeing that bull there and, um, I just kind of like gave Bob a head nod and was like, 
can I get a picture with that thing? And I remember I like I wasn't gonna pick them up and hold them because they're like 80 pounds or whatever they are. And they were heavy. Animals. I just set yeah, them on the ground and I heavy. stood there and I was like, this is like just in- incredible, uh, yeah. incredible bull. So that's, that's awesome. Um, well, Jade, I really appreciate you coming on and, and talking some, uh, some, uh, velvet elk antler with me, uh, and not something that I've explored before. And I, I find fascinating. I'm going to make sure that, uh, I link up uh, velvetantler.com down there in the site. And, you know, if anybody's listening and they want to get a hold of, of Jade and, and get some, some velvet antler and, and start incorporating that into their kind of daily health program. Um, yeah. I, uh, I highly recommend you do that. So I appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Josh. It's been awesome talking. Yeah. You as well. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned for another episode of North American Deer Talk. <laughs>